And once again we have some really exciting discoveries coming from inside our own planet, from inside the Earth's core and the region around the core. This time uncovering a few more things nobody knew about this structure and revealing a few unusual features that were difficult to explain before, and specifically features that once again make Earth just a little bit more unique than potentially any other planet. And so hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss some of these discoveries about planet Earth once again and talk about what was discovered in the last few months and specifically the recent study that discovered an unusual wobble inside the core of our planet. But here I actually wanted to start with some of the older studies first, because all of these discoveries sort of make sense when you connect them to one another. For example, previous assumptions, and also I guess most textbooks, usually describe the inner core as a solid chunk of iron, something that I was taught back in the days as well. And this solid chunk is surrounded by the liquid iron core, which is then surrounded by the mantle. Although in some of the recent studies that you can learn about in the description below, we do have an additional discovery of yet another inner inner core that seems to be a little bit different. But more recently, scientists actually ran chemical simulations in order to see what happens to iron at extremely high pressures and temperatures, especially when there are other elements involved as well, resulting in two discoveries overall. First of all, it looks like the core itself, the inner core, may not be truly solid after all. It seems to form a kind of a super ionic state with other elements like hydrogen, oxygen, carbon and so on. And though years ago it was believed to be solid or potentially crystalline in form, because here iron is mixed with hydrogen, oxygen and carbon, under extreme temperatures and extreme pressures, it seems to produce a slightly different state of matter. And similar to a state that's been studied for many years now, known as superionic water. In case of water, under extreme conditions, each water molecule disturbs oxygen ions, making them form a kind of a solid. But the hydrogen ions form a liquid inside the solid, and are actually able to float around without any issues. And similarly in this case, pressurized iron forms a solid, and various carbon, hydrogen and oxygen atoms start to flow inside of it. In essence creating something that's a little bit softer and a little bit less dense than pure iron and also behaving in slightly different ways that we still do not understand. And this was kind of simulated in another study where the atoms basically jiggle around behaving like a single object and an extremely soft solid representing a kind of a collective motion where a disturbance of one atom disturbs everything else. But when it comes to the actual texture of the core, previous assumptions were once again a little bit incorrect. Even though most models make it look like a kind of a solid chunk, almost a perfect sphere, new studies using a lot of extremely accurate seismic detections reveal that it's far from being smooth and potentially far from being perfectly spherical as well. It actually seems to be very textured, even described as a kind of a fabric. And all of this was discovered by using several arrays of seismometers around the planet that were previously designed to detect nuclear explosions but here they can also detect very very minute earthquakes. And this allowed the scientists behind the recent study to analyze 2500 earthquakes strong enough to reflect from the inner core, which actually revealed unusual wrinkles and unusual folded structures only kilometers across inside the core, with a lot of these unusual structures becoming more common much closer to the center, especially 500 to 800 kilometers away from the surface of the core, which sort of implies that there are certain layers inside the core where it does seem to contain crystal-like iron that seems to change the structure of the ionic liquid, potentially suggesting that the core itself is far from being homogeneous and instead is basically kind of textured in a lot of different ways, but in ways that are difficult for us to imagine because all of this is under extreme pressure and extreme temperatures and so a lot of these iron atoms are currently in an entirely different state. But this also implies that Earth's core must have gone through several periods of rapid growth and also several periods of sudden cooling. Because that's what we usually detect in things like for example ice, when the texture is not smooth and contains a lot of irregularities. And so following this rapid growth, it very likely began to slowly harden into a solid lump of iron, with all of this very likely happening over a period of several million years. This is of course the core that eventually turned into a planet over time. But some of this liquid iron might have been trapped inside the core and would only freeze later in time, forming these unusual textures and unusual crystals within. And this is also something we probably would detect in a lot of other planets as well, depending on how fast they formed. But what makes planet Earth and its core unique is something else from a different study. 
In this case, it's actually the interaction between the core and things from the surface. And specifically, the interaction between ancient tectonic plates that used to exist on the surface, but sank over time through the process of subduction. And subduction itself is one of the most important geological processes that essentially keeps the planet and the biosphere in a permanent state of balance. This is essentially what traps all of the CO2 from the atmosphere, but also maintains the levels of other gases and even things like water, making sure that nothing becomes too extreme. And so as a lot of these tectonic plates fall to the bottom, they eventually reach the outer core, where they usually sort of grind around 3000 kilometers below the surface. And it turns out that all of this results in some really intriguing chemical reactions, especially because a lot of these plates bring with them a lot of compounds, including water, that do not exist inside planet Earth. And so when the water from the surface eventually reaches the bottom, it starts to react with a lot of things, including silicon, to form silica, which then ends up producing what the scientists are now referring to as E prime layer, a kind of a viscous, gooey liquid, potentially a few hundred kilometers thick, that forms a layer right above the outer core. With all of this essentially being the result of billions of years of plate tectonics and chemical reactions inside the planet. In essence, forming a kind of a hydrogen rich film with a lot of silica crystals the result of water molecules reacting with everything inside. And this was recently confirmed by using seismic observations, in essence implying that the global water cycle is definitely way more complex than we ever thought. In this case, all of this water from the surface ends up inside the planet, changing certain structures to some extent, and very likely producing additional effects. And because this material has less density and contains a lot of light elements, it also very likely affects the overall motion of the outer core to some extent, potentially churning things around even more, and thus to some extent assisting in the generation of geomagnetic field or the magnetosphere. In other words, the implication here is that all of this plays a really important role in protecting the planet by forming the magnetosphere around it. Now it's not clear how much of this is responsible for the production of the magnetosphere, but there's clearly a lot of interaction between the outer core and the mantle, a lot of this resulting in exchange of various elements, and the circulation of the outer core that then generates the magnetosphere. Now just to clarify, it doesn't mean that this layer is producing the magnetosphere, it just means that there is some kind of an exchange going on that potentially influences the magnetic field to some extent, or at the least influences the upper layers of the outer core that are responsible for the magnetic field effects. And the last but not least discovery is once again coming from the inner core as well, with all this based on years and years of observations, and specifically the observations of minute changes in the length of the Earth day, and focusing on the slight changes that seem to happen every year. We've discussed some of these changes in one of the videos in the description, but in essence here, even though a single day is approximately 23 hours and 56 minutes in length, there are actually small variations that usually happen because of something that's inside the planet. And in one of the previous videos, we've discussed the discovery that roughly around every six years, the direction of the rotation of the core seems to change just a little bit. Sometimes it's faster than the planet, sometimes it's slower. Funnily enough, this was actually misreported by a lot of media sources as the iron core is stopping or has stopped completely and has reversed its spin. That's not really what happened at all, it was actually just slowing down a little bit. But this time, by observing the motion of the Earth's poles, the researchers were able to discover a pattern. Specifically, they identified a periodic pattern and in essence explain why the core seems to accelerate and decelerate every six years. And while for the lack of a better explanation, it seems to wobble. But with a very very small tilt of about 0.17 degrees. In other words, the rotation of the inner core and the outer core and basically the rest of the planet are not aligned. And this wobble seems to occur every eight and a half years. And all of this, not surprisingly, a result of all of the previous explanations from other studies. Basically the core is not homogeneous, it seems to have a lot of texturing and different types of density inside, and because it's not a perfect sphere, it's not spinning perfectly. Its wobble is really the result of its imperfect shape and imperfect composition on the inside. And specifically, it seems to be just a little bit denser in the northwest hemisphere compared to the rest of the sphere. And this extremely likely also plays a role in the way that the magnetic field is generated on the planet. The magnetosphere on the planet is also not perfect and does actually have quite a lot of irregularities. And so some of these new detections 
could potentially explain this in the future. But overall, in just the last few months, the scientists did manage to discover a huge amount of new details about the inside of our planet, which once again present planet Earth in a completely different way. But this is of course not the first unusual discovery in the last year, and you can find more of these discoveries and more unusual stories in some of the videos in the description. Once there are additional discoveries, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. So thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.